What's up guys, Sagi here and welcome to another Tech Gear Talk. Today we're going to compare the Sony a6400 to the Canon RP and see which option is right for you. The a6400 is an impressive and very affordable APS-C sensor camera from Sony with fast autofocus, very good low light performance, up to 4K 30 and full HD 120 frames per second and a ton of other features we're gonna discuss in this comparison. The Canon RP on the other hand is Canon's entry level full frame mirrorless camera, which uses the new RF mount. It offers 4K video, a fully articulating touchscreen, built in 4K time lapse, and the proven dual pixel autofocus system. We're gonna talk about the strengths and weaknesses of both cameras when it comes to photography and video, and hopefully I can help you decide which option is best for you. My goal with every camera comparison is to give you a detailed overview of the cameras and then compare them in a way that relates to real life use. Okay, let's get going. I'm gonna get into the details of each aspect of the two cameras, but I wanna first quickly go over some overall key features in case you're just starting your research. Now, the A6400 has a really nice magnesium alloy body with sealed buttons and dials. It has a 24 megapixel APS-C CMOS sensor and the Bions X image processor. It can shoot up to 4K 30 and then 1080p or Full HD at up to 120 frames per second. The A6400 uses a hybrid autofocus system with 425 phase and contrast detection points. It has a three inch 921.6 thousand flip LCD screen and can internally record 4K 30 frames per second 420 or externally at 422. It has a nice 2.36 million dot OLED electronic viewfinder. It can shoot continuously at up to 11 frames per second and has an expandable ISO of up to 102,400. Moving on, the RP has a 26.2 megapixel full frame CMOS sensor and it uses the new Digic 8 image processor. It shoots 4K at 24 or 25 frames per second and 1080p or Full HD at 25, 30, 50, and 60 frames per second. The RP uses Canon's awesome dual pixel autofocus system and can shoot photos continuously at up to five frames per second. It has a three inch 1.04 million dot fully articulating or very angled touchscreen and a 2.36 million dot OLED electronic viewfinder. It can shoot in-body time-lapse movies at full HD and 4K, and it can also record 422 8-bit video externally via a clean HDMI out. And then finally, it can be fully controlled with the Canon Camera Connect app. I wanna start out by talking about the sensor and the processor. The A6400 comes with a 24 megapixel APS-C CMOS sensor. The A6400 sensor is BSI or backside illuminated, meaning that some of the elements were moved to the back of the sensor with the goal being better low light performance. And I think that Sony did a good job with this sensor and for the price, it performed very well in low light. The Canon RP comes with a 26 megapixel full frame CMOS sensor with good JPEG performance and excellent color. In terms of strict resolution, there's a slight advantage to the RP with two additional megapixels. Moving on, the Sony APS-C sensor has a crop of 1.5X, and of course the RP having a full frame sensor has no crop. That means that if I put a 50 millimeter lens on the A6400 and apply the 1.5X crop, it gives me a 35 millimeter equivalent field of view of a 75 millimeter lens. On the other hand, if I put the same lens on the RP, I'm actually getting a 50 millimeter field of view. This means that the Canon provides a significantly wider angle of view when using the same focal length lenses. To put this in real world terms, here's the same shot using the same lens at the same focal length on the A6400 and then the RP. And you can see that the A6400 produces a much more cropped final image. This is gonna give the advantage to the RP when we're using wide angle lenses because we're actually getting the full field of view of the focal length that we're using. On the other end of the spectrum, the A6400 will have the advantage when we're using telephoto lenses. In this case, when I use a 200 millimeter lens, the RP gives me a true 200 millimeter field of view, whereas the A6400 now gives me a 300 millimeter field of view. So effectively bringing the subject in closer and filling more of the frame with it. So again, to show you a real world example, here's the same shot with both cameras placed in the exact same spot at 200 millimeter and you can very clearly see the difference. 
If you're someone who uses a lot of wide angle lenses, for example, for landscape or architecture photography, you might prefer the RP. On the other hand, if you're shooting wildlife or subjects that are farther away from you, you may like the additional effective focal length of the a6400. Now, a full frame sensor also gives you a shallower depth of field to help you separate the subject from the background. There are advantages and disadvantages to each sensor, so I'm not gonna give an inherent advantage to one over the other, but I did want to outline the differences. The a6400 has an ISO range of up to 102,400, whereas the RP has a range going up to 40,000. At lower ISO values, both sensors did very well. But as the ISO numbers began to rise, I would give the advantage to the a6400 because of the outstanding low light performance and JPEG noise reduction. As far as processors, the a6400 uses the Bions X processor and the RP uses the Digic 8 processor. And the combination of sensor and processor on both cameras produced very nice images and video for me. On top of that, basic menu operation was fast for both cameras. Both have very fast startup and things like image preview and video playback and going back and forth was very fast. Moving on, because of how I shoot, one of the features that I look at with every camera that I test is continuous or burst shooting. And you can just point the camera at a subject, hold down the shutter and the camera will just keep firing. And this is a nice feature if you're photographing sports, pets, kids running around or any fast moving subject. Now, of course, the more frames you get per second, the more exposures you'll have to pick from later on. And the a6400 can shoot it up to 11 frames per second in burst mode, and the RP can only shoot it up to five frames per second. Now, when we look at buffer memory, we can see that Sony reports 99 JPEG and 46 raw images for the a6400 versus unlimited JPEG and 50 raw images for the RP. So as far as continuous shooting, the a6400 definitely has the advantage when it comes to speed with more than double the number of frames per second. When it comes to buffer size, the RP has the edge with unlimited JPEGs and only a slight edge when shooting raw. For me, the a6400 fits with how I shoot because I value having more exposure over a larger buffer and I don't ever shoot more than 99 JPEGs in burst mode. I do know that some users definitely take advantage of large buffer sizes, so it comes down to what you plan to do with the camera. Moving on, one of the most important things for me with any tool that I use is ergonomics in terms of both handling and functionality. As far as size goes, both cameras are relatively small, which makes them both great options when it comes to portability and travel. I always consider the camera size in terms of performance, ergonomics, and portability. So although the RP is small for a full frame sensor camera, it's quite a bit bigger than the a6400. It was more comfortable for me to hold, especially with larger lenses, and it had a deeper and more secure grip. On the other hand, the a6400, while slightly less comfortable, is noticeably smaller and lighter. So if you're looking for something that's small and light, you wanna just put it in your pocket and go, you might like the a6400. If you're looking for a bigger body that might be more comfortable to hold and use for longer shoots or for longer periods of time, especially with larger lenses, then you might prefer the RP. I like the build quality on both cameras, but the a6400 has some weather sealing to make a dust and moisture resistant, which is something that isn't mentioned with the RP. As far as battery life, the a6400 uses the older NPFW50 battery, and it's rated for 360 shots using the viewfinder and 410 shots using the LCD. The RP uses the LPE17, and it's rated for about 250 shots. If you've seen my detailed review of the Canon RP, you'd have heard me mention that the LPE17 seems undersized, and I'm definitely giving the advantage to the a6400. One feature that I really like about the a6400 is that it can be used while plugged in. So if you record long video sessions or if you're streaming, you don't have to worry about the battery life. The RP does have a similar feature, but you have to use a coupler. And I'll put a link in the description to the one that I use. I'm giving the edge here to the a6400 because it doesn't require me to buy another item and take out the battery every time I want this functionality. When it comes to charging, the a6400 doesn't come with a battery charger, so you have to charge the battery in the camera, or you have to buy an additional charger. The RP also allows you to charge the battery in camera, but in addition to that, it comes with a dedicated battery charger. 
So again, if you end up buying extra batteries for the A6400, just remember that you'll also need to pick up a charger so that you can charge the additional batteries while you're using the camera. Let's talk a little bit about the viewfinder. Um, because of the A6400's rangefinder style design, the viewfinder doesn't protrude from the body and it contributes to a much more compact design. On the other hand, the RP has a nice and bright EVF, which was more comfortable for me to use because of the camera's overall larger body. The A6400 does have the advantage of a higher selectable refresh rate of 120 frames per second, which can lead to a smoother viewing experience when panning or whenever you're following a subject. Next, I wanna discuss the buttons and dials on both cameras. I always say that if you're buying a camera and you're just using it with a factory setting, you're really missing out. Part of what you get when you're buying a nice camera is the ability to customize it to work exactly how you want. Now, the A6400 uses the top dial and the control wheel on the back for aperture and shutter speed. And it has two custom buttons that you can use to get quick access to frequently used features. Now, the RP has two dials on top, one towards the back and one towards the front. For basic operations, I prefer the ergonomics of the RP because I can use two different fingers one to control shutter speed and the other to control aperture. Whereas on the A6400, I have to move my thumb from the top dial to the control wheel. I also like that I can lock the top dial on the Canon RP so that I don't accidentally change that setting. And this was particularly useful when I was shooting video and I didn't wanna accidentally change my shutter speed. On the other hand, while both cameras can be customized, I felt that the A6400 gave me more options because it simply has more buttons that I can assign dedicated functions to. Now this ties right into the next thing that I wanna talk about and that's ease of use, where I'm gonna give the edge to the RP. I found it to be easier to use both in terms of controls, the menu, and the ability to use the full touchscreen, which I'll get to later on in the video. I understand, of course, that there's a subjective component here and if you've used both, I'm really curious to know what you think, so let me know in the comments section. Next, I wanna talk about resolution, frame rates, and image quality. For photography, the A6400 offers a 6,000 by 4,000 pixel image, and the RP offers a 6240 by 4160 image. So as far as strict head-to-head -head resolution, the slight edge goes to the RP. Both cameras can shoot both JPEG and RAW, so you can decide just how much information you wanna capture, and that will depend on what you plan on doing with these images in post-production. I was super happy with the images I got from both cameras for the price, and the photos were clean and crisp. I really loved the color that I was getting from both. Now, in terms of image quality, both cameras produced an overall image that I was very happy with, but I'm gonna give the advantage to the A6400 because of the improved low light performance of the sensor. Now, this allowed me to shoot at higher ISO values when I needed to, and the JPEG noise reduction on the A6400 is excellent in my opinion. I can do a more detailed image quality comparison in another video, so if that's something that you're interested in, let me know in the comment section and make sure that you're subscribed and that you have notifications turned on. For video, the A6400 can record 4K video at 24 and 30 frames per second, and then full HD or 1080p at 24, 30, 60, and 120 frames per second. The RP can shoot 4K only at 24 frames per second or 1080p at 30 and 60 frames per second. And that's of course when you're shooting in NTSC mode. 4K on the RP is also limited by an additional crop of 1.7X, which is now more significant than the A6400's APS-C sensor and completely negates the wide angle field of view advantage the full frame sensor has for photography. 4K on the RP is also hampered by the lack of dual pixel autofocus, which is replaced by contrast detection autofocus. I wanna mention that both cameras can record 4228 bit via the clean HDMI out. Putting all of this together, the A6400 has a significant edge here with a slightly smaller crop at 4K24, 4K30, which the RP can't do at all, 120 frames per second in full HD for great slow motion, and much better autofocus when shooting in 4K. Overall, I just like the 4K footage on the A6400 better than what I got from the RP. So if that's a feature that you're looking for, I would suggest that you go with the Sony. For 1080p, I'm happy with the footage I got from both cameras at 30 and 60 frames per second. But again, Sony has the advantage because it can do 120 frames per second 
and 24 frames per second, which I have no idea why Canna removed from the RP. The A6400 also offers a video option called SNQ, which if you're not familiar with, allows you to select frame rates ranging from one frame per second all the way up to 120 frames per second. The camera will then either slow it down or speed it up to 24, 30 or 60 frames per second. So if you're using SNQ 120 and you watch the clip in your camera or on your computer, it's already slowed down versus shooting regular 1080p 120, which you will need to slow down in your video editor. Next, I wanna talk about time-lapse and the A6400 offers interval shooting which lets you have full control over your time lapse. You can drag your shutter and you can get the exact results that you want. Once you're done shooting, you will need to take the individual stills and compile them into a time lapse video using some sort of software. The RP comes with in body 1080p and 4K time lapse, meaning that the RP will actually compile the time lapse for you so that it's ready to be viewed and used. Now, this is where you're gonna have to choose. The A6400 gives you much more control over your time-lapse, a higher resolution, but it does mean that you have to do some work in post-production. Now the RP does that work for you, but you're more limited in terms of exposure and resolution. And I'm not gonna pick a winner here because different users are gonna have different preferences based on what they wanna accomplish. Now moving on, because both cameras offer a clean HDMI out, they're both good options when it comes to live streaming. Now, one of the features that I really appreciate about the A6400 is that there is no longer a 30 minute recording limit for video. This allows for continuous recording of longer clips and removes the hassle of having to keep track of the length of the current clip so you don't accidentally reach the 30 minute mark and then have your camera automatically stop recording. So if you're using this for YouTube or to shoot an interview or record an event, you're gonna love the fact that you can record continuously for much, much longer. All right, next let's talk about autofocus. And if you've watched my dedicated reviews of these two cameras, you know that for the most part, I've been extremely impressed with the autofocus on both cameras. The A6400 has 425 phase and 425 contrast detection points, and they cover about 84% of the sensor. The RP uses Canon's incredible dual pixel autofocus system, and it has a reported 4,779 autofocus points. For photography, both cameras performed well with probably a slight edge to the A6400 in terms of speed. In terms of low light, I'm gonna give the edge to the RP because it has a focus sensitivity range starting at minus five EV versus minus two EV on the A6400. And this could help you focus on underexposed areas of your image. The eye autofocus has been good on both cameras, and I love the fact that when I'm shooting portraits, I don't have to worry about the focus point and getting it exactly on the subject eye, and I can just concentrate on framing and let the camera take care of it for me. Now, in my experience, the A6400's eye autofocus worked better. It was able to pick up eyes on a subject that was farther away from the camera, and it was quicker to track it and more precise. The A6400 also offers animal eye autofocus, which is really important to me because I take a lot of pictures of my dogs. And the traditional zone-based autofocus options would always focus on the nose because it's the closest thing to the camera. For video, in 1080p, I've always been a fan of Canon's dual pixel autofocus system and the RP does a great job. I'm completely confident that when the camera is facing me, my face is being identified, it's being tracked, and there'll be no hunting. On the other side, the A6400 also has face tracking, which worked really well. And I didn't experience the type of hunting that I sometimes got from older Sony models. Both cameras also offer subject tracking, which is great, and it can be activated by using the touchscreen. But in my opinion, the RP was easier to use. Moving to autofocus in 4K, the A6400 is the clear winner because the RP loses the dual pixel autofocus system and instead uses a much slower and less reliable system. So to recap, in 1080p, I'm happy with what I got from both cameras. But when you move to 4K, the A6400 wins and it's not even close. So while the RP autofocus modes and interface using the touchscreen make it much easier to use for tracking, if you plan on shooting in 4K, you should definitely take the autofocus limitation into account if you don't plan on using manual focus. Let's talk a little bit about the screen. And the A6400 has a three inch 922,000 LCD tilting flip screen. 
so we can finally see ourselves when we're in front of the camera without using an external monitor. It's not the most elegant implementation, and if you wanna know more about it, check out my detailed review, but it does work. The RP has a fully articulating screen that can be tilted up, down, to both sides, plus turned 180 degrees to face the front. When I take into account the different types of photography that I do, using the camera on a slider and on a gimbal, there's no question that the advantage here goes to the RP in terms of screen positioning. Moving on, both companies refer to their screens as touchscreen, but the RP has a full touchscreen, while the A6400 only has a partial one. So on the RP, you can navigate the menu, you can select options and features from the screen, and you can touch and drag to focus. On the A6400, you can only use the touchscreen functionality for focus, so once again, I'm gonna give the advantage to the RP. Overall, the screen on the RP is much more versatile and contributes to a much more streamlined and intuitive user interface experience. Moving on, the next set of features that I wanna bring up have to do with audio. Both the A6400 and the RP have an external mic input, so you can use an external microphone to get excellent audio right out of the camera. A feature that I liked about both cameras is that the audio level display is always available on the LCD when you're in movie mode. So if you're preparing to record or even while you're shooting, you can see the levels and then you can also adjust them while recording. Part of my custom setup for the A6400 included making this change more accessible without having to go into the menu. And I'll put links in the description to that video. With the RP, you can just click on the Q menu and then use the touch screen to make adjustments to the audio levels. I also recently put out a video discussing the importance of audio for video, and I'll link to it up in the corner and in the description. In addition to the external mic input, the RP also has a headphone jack so I can plug in a set of headphones to monitor the audio. I use this feature with every camera that I have that offers it because it has saved me so much work. Don't get me wrong, the levels display is great for setting gain or volume levels, but there have been so many times when I put on a pair of headphones to monitor the audio and I realize that I can still hear a dehumidifier in the other room or any type of interference that I wouldn't know about otherwise. Overall, I'm gonna give the edge here to the RP when it comes to audio because I appreciate being able to monitor audio using the headphone jack. Next, I wanna talk about lens options. The RP uses the new Canon RF mount. This is a new mount that has a wide diameter and a 20 millimeter flange focal distance. So it's supposed to allow Canon to create lenses that are smaller and faster than their DSLR counterparts. At the time that I'm making this video, the RF lineup of lenses is limited and quite expensive. So far, there's a 24 to 105 F4 for $1,100, there's a new 85 millimeter 1.2 for 2,700, 28 to 70 F2 for 3,000, a 35 1.8 macro for 550, and a 50 millimeter F1.2 for $2,100. But we're finally starting to see more affordable options coming out with the soon to be released 24 to 240, f4 to 6.3 image stabilized lens for 900 bucks. If you wanna use your EF or EFS mount lenses on the RP, you can do that using an adapter. And there are some limitations when using the EFS lenses, but there are also some pretty cool and interesting options with drop-in filters. I discuss this in more detail in my dedicated review, but I wanna mention that every time you have to use an adapter, you're adding another part that you have to buy and carry with you, and you're also increasing the size of your setup. The A6400 uses the E-mount, which offers you tons of options. Normally people complain about the cost of the high-end Sony lenses, but if I compare them to the RF mount lenses, then I'm either at the same ballpark or even lower. There are also some amazing options from third-party providers and some non-professional options from Sony. So at this time, I'm definitely giving the edge to the A6400 because there are a lot more options that don't require an adapter. And if you buy full frame sensor lenses, you can upgrade your body in the future and reuse them. Moving on, I also wanna talk about other features that these cameras have that could help you make a buying decision. And first I wanna talk about image stabilization. The A6400 does not have image stabilization, so you'll have to rely on lens-based OSS. The RP also doesn't have sensor shifting in-body image stabilization, it does offer in-body digital image stabilization that can work together with lens-based IS. 
Now I normally don't rely on it and I would rather use Warp Stabilizer and Premiere Pro, but if that's something that you plan on using, then I would give the edge to the RP. The next thing I wanna talk about is the two apps. And the A6400 uses the Imaging Edge app, which is okay. You can control shooting modes, shutter speed, aperture, ISO, and white balance for both photography and video. Also for photography, you can control the self timer, continuous shooting settings, and there are some flash options available. When it comes to video, you can adjust your frame rate, movie format, and you can start and stop recording. But as I said in my detailed review, a huge problem is that you can't see which autofocus mode is selected and you can't change it. You also can't see where the focus point is or select a different point. So that pretty much makes the app useless to me when it comes to video and I only use it for framing and to start and stop the video. Now the Canon Camera Connect app gives you full functionality for both photography and video. So you can control everything that you can control with the Imaging Edge app, plus you can see where the focus point is, you can select a different focus point or a different focus mode. And finally, both apps do allow you to preview and transfer images and video to your mobile device. Now I'm gonna give the edge to the RP because the Canon Camera Connect app focus feature is just critical for how I use the camera. Okay, so which camera is a better value and which one of these should you get? And in order to make that decision, we need to discuss the cost. And at the time that I'm making this video, the A6400 costs 900 bucks and the RP costs $1,300. So that's a significant difference when you're looking at this price point. The A6400 has more frame rate options in 4K, 24 frames per second at 1080p for a more cinematic look, 120 frames per second at 1080p for excellent slow motion, great video quality in 4K with better autofocus, better low light performance, faster burst shooting, more dials and custom buttons, a better battery life, no time recording limit, and it's less expensive. Overall, I prefer the ergonomics on the RP. It can do in-body time-lapse, has a fully articulating real touchscreen, an easier to use interface, offers digital image stabilization, uses a better app, and offers audio monitoring using a headphone jack. I always say that you can't have everything in any camera. So it comes down to which features are important to you for how you shoot. I do my best to answer every question. So if you have any additional questions for me, just put them in the comment section. I'll put links in the description to where you can get the A6400 and the Canon RP, as well as some popular kits and accessories. There are always some holiday specials and discounts, and the links are automatically updated with the lowest pricing. And if you end up ordering anything using those links, you can support my channel for free and help me create more content for you, so thank you in advance. I also have links in the description to the more detailed videos about each camera if you wanna see a more in-depth review. I really hope this video gave you a good comparison between the Sony a6400 and the Canon RP, and I'd love to hear in the comment section which option is best for you and why. If this video was helpful, please let me know by giving it a thumbs up, tweet it, share it, and for more camera reviews and tutorials, Join the community by hitting the subscribe and notification buttons. You can always find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Tech Gear Talk. And you know what I always say, buy it nice or buy it twice. Good luck and see you soon.